So in a lot of ways, I think starting with hand quilting, which, you know, some people might say it's the hardest way to make a quilt. I don't think it's hard. I think it the hard part is having the patience to sit down and do it and to not be overwhelmed by the abyss of deep time. Hi everyone, I'm quilt artist Brent McGee, and this is my first uh, sit and sew. or I'll be sewing in real time so you can actually see how fast or really how slow the quilting process is and uh, sharing some tips and just generally chatting about what's going on in my quilting life. So right now I'm working on finishing up this line of stitching. I'm following this basting line. I always baste my quilts. Well, not always, but I usually baste a nice art quilt like this with the shapes that I'm going to actually quilt. Um, I find it easier to kind of draw the image on, the quilted image on, if I baste with string as opposed to using a marker or something like that. And then now the method I'm using is I put down a piece of tape, masking tape, to mark my sewing line. As you see here, I'm always I'm just about coming to the end of a, a line. And when I do, I'm running out of thread. So I'll also tie off, show you how I do that, re-thread the needle, and how I begin. I'm using a hoopless method. Um, which I've been doing now for three years. And I find it to be really kind of no fuss, no muss, because you don't have to worry about, first of all, loading the hoop, having a hoop. You can really just get going with what you have, which is a needle and thread. So I'm going to stop there. Tie off. Now, I'm not so sure if this is the way, uh, you know, people tie off in different ways. Some people like to make a knot and bury it. Some people um, won't do anything. They'll actually take the needle and go back through and weave it in. But what I like to do, and I don't think it's the right way, but who cares about that, is I like to go to the back. I like to bury my needle into the back. Show you here. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of the back. Run my needle through to make a little knot. Now I'm going to go through that little hole that it creates. And I'm just taking the needle between the layers and into the batting. Or I'll pull it out like that. Stick the needle there. Grab my scissors. And snip it off. I don't know if you can see that here. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? All right. So I'm going to continue on lifting up this tape and marking my next line. That looks pretty good. So then I'll just cut out that basting, take it out. I'm using a Gooderman quilting.
spread, 100% cotton. It's pre-waxed, um, and I don't know. I just bought a ton of it, and I really like how it hand quilts. I like that it's got kind of a, a little bit of a body to it from the pre-waxing. It keeps it from knotting up too much. I mean, you'll probably see me knot it up a little as we go here. But it goes through a needle nice and easy. Right here, I've been trying out these Fonz and Porter quilting needles. Um, so far, I like it. I don't know, I use kind of whatever I have. From Clover to Bohin, I've used all kinds. Let me show you that again. Okay, so here's how I make the knot at the end. Okay, you've got your needle, and what you want to do is you want to take the end of your thread and point it at your needle to make the quilter's knot. Let me see, maybe I could put it over that, you can see it better. So you point the end at it, and then you're gonna hold it like that. So you've made kind of a loop all the way around with the thread. Now you're gonna go one, two, three. You can do as many as you want. Sometimes I'll do four. I'll do one more, just because. Now you're gonna hold those loops between your thumb and your index finger, push this needle through, grab it, and you have those loops now traveling through the thread. Pull it gently. And when you get to the end of your thread, there you have a knot. I'll talk about my thimbles that I use here. At first I used to use just this thimble on my index finger because I found it was easier to grab the needle uh, give me a little bit of um, friction to grab the needle. But then I was finding I was getting a lot of calluses here and it was painful. I could only quilt for so many days in a row. And so I bit the bullet and started using this leather thimble, which at first felt cumbersome, but now it feels great. And I can't imagine doing it any other way. So this is a little bit different. You know, you're used to being told that you're thimble belongs on your middle finger and you're pushing there and kind of doing a this motion. But I found that I use these two for this special hoopless method of quilting. So let's get quilting. So I'm going to First of all, bury that knot. So I'm going to start behind where I want to start. If I want my first stitch to begin here, I'm going to come back here and go between the layers and pull up a stitch right here. Now I need two hands. Kind of pull that knot in. All right. Now, I'm doing kind of on the underside of this fabric, I'm pinching what I need. I'm, I'm, when I'm, I'm pinching uh, right where I'm quilting to create the tension I need to rock the needle. So I've got, so I'm, it's kind of like this underneath is what I'm doing. And I'm lifting up this finger to allow the needle underneath, allow the needle underneath. So from the top, I push down. You can see I've grabbed now. Put the needle in next to where you want to stitch. Push it kind of back. Now, here's what I'm doing. My middle finger underneath, and I, I'm having a hard time getting an, an image of what this looks like underneath, but I'll try to explain it to you. My middle finger underneath is applying pressure to the needle while my thumb here is pulling down on this fabric, pulling it back into, 
creating that tension so that I can slide the needle. If you look, you can kind of see the needle sliding underneath. So I can slide the needle where I want it to come up and then I can push it through with these two. And since I've got my fingers protected, the pushing is really no big deal. And just push through as much of a stitch as I want to take. Now everything is relaxed at this point and I tip the needle and I'm gonna, so I tip the needle and I'm gonna push it in to grab another stitch. Now it doesn't matter if I've taken too, if I've pushed my needle too far, I'm in here, I've pushed it all the way to here because I can always pull it back because I have a nice grip on the needle here. And I also with my middle finger underneath, can apply pressure to move that needle where I need it to go. So here it is again. Push in. I'm simultaneously kind of putting pressure here, down, down, while I'm using that middle finger underneath to move that needle right where I want it to go. And then here I'm adjusting it to get the to get this right where I want it to be. So here it is again. Down and I'm pull. Okay. So it's this dance between your right hand and your left hand. The left thumb here is pulling down. It's pulling down. It's going like this to create that tension while the middle finger is going up. So it's like this motion. And that middle finger is pushing on the needle like this. So this is, the thumb is pulling the fabric and the middle finger is gliding along the needle. So it's like in, and then the finger grabs it and it comes back out. Down, the finger grabs it. Okay. Pull my thread all the way through. You can see a little knot was starting to form and so what you can do Make sure that doesn't happen. All right, here comes again. So when I start, let's see if I can get nice and close. Put the needle in, and I like to kind of push it, you know, make the trajectory of the needle kind of go back towards the previous stitches I just did. Now underneath, my middle finger is grabbing that needle and pushing it up while my thumb is creating tension, my left thumb. Push it through. Now let me get a good pace going. Now this isn't gonna be your only chance to watch me hand quilt. I'm gonna be doing a lot of hand quilting on this channel, both in tutorial form, but also in just sit and sew form, like this video, which is kind of a combination of the two. But you'll get to see me do a lot of quilting. You're also gonna to get to see me do hand applique work, which, Here's a good example. This is a coral reef quilt I'm working on. I have a whole video about my coral reef quilted uh, series, but all of these are individually appliqued. Here's, these are all appliqued down, needle turn applique. So I'll also be showing you that technique as well. So let's continue here. There are a lot of videos um, that kind of show hand quilting um, without a hoop. You know, I'm not the only person who sort of gets intimidated by having, by needing a lot of equipment. Um, 
but most of them are showing a small project as opposed to a big project. And I find what a lot of people run into and a lot of the questions I saw in the comments about um, quilting without a hand quilting without a hoop was that people were like, how do I quilt in the middle of a quilt? Because what you end up getting, if I can just grab another little practice needle here, is they'll show you on the edge of a project where you can get your thumb, you know, where your, your thumb is on top of the project. And here you can see the way I'm, what the thumb is doing underneath, because now it's on top, because I'm at the edge of a project. And so I can grab stitches this way. You can see how the thumb is kind of pulling that fabric down and creating that tension. Now the only difference is once you start getting too far into the quilt, you can't keep doing that, especially if you're working on a, a large quilt like I'm doing here. And so you get in the habit of learning that you can do the same thing by putting, here's the thumb, by using it that way and then you're just it's like it's, it's just like the other way except you've got fabric over your hand is all and you get used to it so that's it you know when people say how do you quilt in the middle of a big quilt that's it you you just pinch the fabric from the inside from behind here's my thumb And you do it just the same way you would as if your thumb was out. I started hand quilting back in 2020. Uh, like so many people, the pandemic led me to um, a hobby, <laughs> essentially. I had made a quilt. My sister asked me to make her a quilt for her house. And I made, I pulled out my sewing machine, which I had never really used. I, you know, I was planning to make clothes and, you know, just never happened. And she said, hey, could you make me something for, you know, something big, maybe out of fabric for my wall? And I said, well, okay, how about a quilt? I've always wanted to make one. I've never done it. Um, and she said, perfect, a quilt. Um, I said, well, what's the inspiration here? And she said, well, how about that Japanese garden we went to um, in Seattle? I said, okay, so I drew up a sketch for her and I'll, I'll put up pictures here for you. And got to work on it. Cutting out the fabric, uh, appliqueing, a kind of a rough applique at the time. I didn't know what I was doing at all. These fish scales down. And then uh, I didn't even really sew them down. I kind of basted them down. And then I just quilted over the whole thing with a machine in matchstick quilting, very, very close together stitching, leaving, um, leaving the areas unstitched to make these ripples. Anyway, I got to the end of making that quilt. I loved how it turned out. My sister loved it. It looks great in her house. And I realized, you know, I loved the creativity of the quilting and, you know, rendering an image and fabric was really exciting. But I didn't like using the machine. It just felt a little cumbersome and it was loud. And I couldn't really listen to things I wanted to listen to or, you know, have Netflix going on in the background with this kind of loud machine going on. So I was like, all right, I'm up for my next quilt, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn to hand quilt. I'm gonna learn to do this the old fashioned way. And so I did what all of us do in these days. It seems that we want to learn something new. I turned to YouTube and just looked up hand quilting and saw videos where people were using a hoop, but then also hoopless videos came up as well. 
And those really appealed to me because I thought, gosh, I can just grab a needle and thread and start right now. I don't have to worry about any extra special equipment. And so that's how I got started with it. I've now made, I don't know, maybe, let's see, six completed, um, I'll put pictures up for you, six completed hand quilted, hand appliqued quilts, including one that I'm considering, I don't know, my first sort of serious um, accomplishment as a quilter this coral reef quilt, which I spent over 550 hours working on and uh, finished it, thought it was, you know, loved the image, thought I did a, a pretty good job, but I don't know, you know, I thought I should enter this in a show. Um, you know, Paducah or Houston or something like that. But then I kept just thinking about all the issues and problems and my stitches aren't small enough and my applique is this or that. And so I put the quilt away for a year. And then I pulled it out again, put it on my wall and said, wow, this quilt is actually really stunning. And I'd be doing myself a disservice not to be putting it out there into the world. So I looked on the internet and found that in my local area, there's a quilt guild. Northern Star Quilters Guild. And they had a show coming up, uh, you know, at the time, it was like, I don't know, a month or two to the show and they were still accepting submissions so I took some photographs sent them along registered waited with bated breath to see if I would get into that show it wasn't a juried entrance but they the but it but I didn't know if, since I wasn't in the guild if I was going to be you know first serve first come first serve so I got into the show um and I'll never forget the day came when it was time to drop off the quilt. So, so we drove up to the drop off location and I had never spoken to other quilters in my entire, you know, my, the, the three years I had been quilting, it just been me alone talking about it with my family and my friends who don't, who don't quilt. And so when I brought the quilt in and I laid it out for them to inspect it before they, you know, took it in to put in the show, these ladies, these quilters were, their jaws were dropped. I felt like I had won an Oscar. I had felt like I already had won. Just getting that validation and the, the realization when they, when they recognized that I had hand stitched the whole thing, hand appliqued the whole thing, dyed the fabric myself, designed my own image, they really got it. And not to toot my own horn, but it was it was a very proud moment. And I got back in the car and I said to my husband, oh my God, Bjorn, I feel like I've already won this thing. I don't even need an award. The way, the way I just felt sharing my work. And of course the ladies were so sweet. They were like, you need to join the guild. Why aren't you in the guild? Who are you? Where did you come from? And at that point, it was only my fourth quilt I had ever made. And, you know, they were super impressed with that. So it was all just sort of coming together. Well, a week later was the show. And lo and behold, I won first place in my category, which was um, art quilts pictorial, um, like landscape category, as opposed to portraits or something like that. Um, and just got really great comments from the judge, first of all, um, who 
gave me gave me kudos on my hand quilting, my hand applique, on my color, on the way the quilting design held, told the story of the quilt. Also, there's a also written on it was held for applique, held for hand quilting. And when they say they hold a quilt for something, it means they're considering you in the running for other kinds of awards. Um, whether it's judge's choice or um, hand applique or hand quilting. Uh, so I was held for all of those categories. So my quilt was really kind of up for all the major awards, really. It was in the running for all of it. So my first time up to bat at a quilt show was really, really successful. And I spent, it was a two-day show, and I went to both days, all day long, and I just kind of, I don't know, I just hung out by my quilt. I enjoyed looking at everyone's quilts. I mean, that was another amazing thing at that show is seeing what other people are up to. But the thing that really stood out to me was talking to the people at the show, the majority of whom were quilters themselves, who really could see all the care and effort I put into making that piece. And they just instantly got it. And I thought, man, I'm normally someone who doesn't really like to interact with people too much. I like to be home by myself. Uh, but man, I was enjoying those interactions. I thought these are my people. And lo and behold, by the end of the show, I had signed up to be a part of the guild. And before you know it, I was attending meetings and all of that. So that's kind of the story of that quilt. Now, I joined other guilds as well, two other guilds, um, kind of a small local one and, and one down in New York City as well, the Metro Modern Quilters Guild down in New York City, where I showed off some of my quilts, including the Coral Reef quilt. And just really started to feel like I had found my, my group of people that I wanted to spend time with. So now here I'm kind of coming to the edge so I can use my thumb. Let's show you some of that quilting here. Now with the confidence I got from that show, I decided to enter my, that coral reef quilt. Oh, the dogs are barking at something. I decided to enter that coral reef quilt into the Houston Quilt Festival, which uh, is really the largest and one might argue most prestigious uh, quilt show in the world. And you, this is a juried show. So they look at your pictures of your quilt first and then they decide between a rather large pool of entrants who gets, who's going to get into the show. So I submitted everything I needed to submit and I entered it in the large pictorial category. And I waited. I was like, man, if I could just getting into that show, just to have my quilt hanging in a, in a major national, international show like that would be, man, I don't, I don't even know what, I don't even know what I would do with myself. I'm definitely gonna go. And my husband was like, well, you should go anyway, even if you don't get in. I said, oh gosh, I don't know if I could go if I don't get in. I, I, I'd be jealous of, I'd be jealous. I'd be like, why is it my quilt there? You know, I'm already like, I've already got a taste of that show quilt thing. I'm already annoying about it, basically. So I waited and waited and finally the email came in uh, recently, actually. And it said, congratulations, your, your quilt, Coral Fans, has been selected to hang in our juried show. So that show's going to be in November. And it's the reason I've started this YouTube channel. Opportunity is not a lengthy visitor. And I'm going to be there. Thousands of people are going to be seeing my quilts. And I'm going to be talking to as many of them as I can and introducing myself and... I've had other quilters ask me, do you have a YouTube channel, Instagram, all of that? And I hadn't had it. I was just on my own. And so I decided, man, this, this is too big an opportunity 
to waste. And so I've started this channel and I started up an Instagram, Brent McGee Quilts, same name as this channel, Brent McGee Quilts, um, to start sharing my process as a, as a quilt artist. So on this channel, you'll see me dyeing fabric. You'll see how I design using my iPad is usually where I like to design my quilts first before I make them. You'll see me doing a lot of stitching, a lot of applique. Um, I bit the bullet and I got a nicer sewing machine and I, I've been also working on pieces on, on a machine. So I'm improving those skills as well. I've made traditional style patchwork quilts. I've made king size bed quilts. Um, but really what, what melts my butter <laughs> are these nature, ocean, water, fish, coral inspired pieces that, you know, ever since I was a kid, I just have always had an obsession. And that I've, I've found that this quilting is the, has been the best way for me to express that passion. So after I finished that big, you know, the one that's going to Houston, Coral Fans, I thought, well, what am I going to do next? And I thought, well, bigger. <laughs> I want to make something bigger. I like the idea that quilts are already kind of big. You know, they're bed size. So as a work of art, you can make something that's big and it's not, you know, it's not like a painting where a big eight foot by eight foot painting is audacious. A big eight foot by eight foot quilt is just a, a bed size. I mean, that's big. It takes a long time to do, but it's not unheard of. So I thought, man, I want to, I want to make something bigger. So this quilt is a big panorama. I'll put up pictures of it, of where I'm at with it so far. It's like a big field, rolling plains of coral. With these coral-like grasses and then the fish darting up and out and the fish will go up and into the wave area as well. This quilt is going to take me years. Um, the quilting is one thing. I'll get the quilting done here in the next few months. Um, I could get it done in, I don't know, a maybe one month if I worked on it every single day for a few hours, but I, I'm working on multiple projects. But it's this applique, you know, putting in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fish, I work in rows, you can see it's rows. Just putting in the fish, that many fish, that would take mm, an hour, hour and a half, maybe somewhere in there. And then I've got to go through and applique in a row and, you know, for instance, this row right here, that represents really a couple of hours of stitching. So you start multiplying that by, it, you know, all the way down, all the way down, and then also all the way across. And this thing goes on for, you know, it's seven feet wide. So we're talking hundreds of these little fish chromis fish and hundreds of these coral units i guess you want to i guess you could call them and this is all hand dyed fabric so it's going to take me a good long while so part of this channel is i can't you know like some channels they'll make an entire quilt in one video i can't do that I, the way i work the pieces are, you know, these are long form. Got myself all mixed up here. These are long form pieces. So part of this channel's goal is to kind of keep you updated and you can see over time how I make major works like this. I'm almost coming to the end of this particular row. I 
I used to use um, this pen. Let me show you. This marking pen. Soline air erasing pen. I can show you here. I used to mark it like this. Or I'll do the rest of it this way. And these pens are really good. They do erase just, you know, within really minutes. Not a super straight line, but it's fine. They really do erase, you know, 15, 20 minutes, you can't really see it anymore, which is an issue if you're not working super quick. Um, and within 24 hours, you, you can't see it at all anymore. So you, it's not like you can draw your whole image out and wash it out later. Uh, I don't wash my quilts ever, at least the ones that aren't meant to be used. I mean, these are works of art, wall hangings. So I needed a way to mark the fabric that where I didn't have to wash it afterward, wash it out afterward. So I use these markers. But I don't know, then I have to buy a bunch of markers and, you know, you go through them when you're making these pieces. So I still use it for some things, but for these more straight lines and even sort of larger curves, at least if they're not too curved, I can, um, I'm finding the tape gives me a much cleaner line to, to sew along. But here's just an example of how I kind of used to do it. So quilting is, you know, you learn the things that work for you over time. I do also do machine, you know, piecing, but now I also do free motion quilting on the machine as well as walking foot quilting. And you bet I'm gonna get me a long arm one of these days. You know, we've saved up our pennies or, you know, my husband is feeling generous. I'm definitely going to, I feel like a long arm would allow me to make some larger projects that I'm really, really interested in doing where I could hand quilt it and take years and years, but you know, not every piece, you know, if I'm trying to make you know, a few pieces a year, maybe five to 10 works of art as opposed to just usable quilts. Um, not that those aren't works of art, that's not what I mean. I put a different amount of effort into a quilt that's going to be used as opposed to one that's going to be displayed or possibly sent to a show. But if I wanna make more of those quality of quilts, some of them I can do on a machine. And if I'm gonna be making something gigantic, a long arm would be a great way to expand my creative outlets. So I guess I'm sort of on my way to becoming a well-rounded quilter with a lot of different skills. So in a lot of ways, I think starting with hand quilting, which, you know, some people might say it's the hardest way to make a quilt. I don't think it's hard. I think it the hard part is having the patience to sit down and do it and to not be overwhelmed by the abyss of deep time. This is a phrase I use a lot. Quilting makes you confront the abyss of deep time. Even a quilt on a machine takes a long time. So doing it this way, where everything is by hand, you've got to, um, you've got to put down your now, now, now brain and recognize that every tiny stitch that you put in to the quilt is a stitch that needed to be there 
and that stitch you're not going to have to do it again because now it's there so every stitch you know the quilt with a of 10,000 stitches starts with one stitch so here I've come to the end I'm gonna do my tie-off method that I showed you before Sorry, I'm so off to the side here. And there you have it. They're not the straightest of lines, but it kind of doesn't matter for my style. It's almost like drawing more than perfect, perfectly straight lines. Now, here's the thing about all of this quilting that you see right here. All of this quilting here that's underneath these fish is you're not even going to see any of this quilting. I mean, you see it from the back. If you ever look at the back of the quilt. But you're not going to see it from the front because all of this, it's the base foundation for all of this applique work. And I had to quilt it down because you can't have all these loose layers underneath, you know, within your quilt or it'll fall apart. Not to mention when you quilt it, it changes the size of it. It brings it in, makes it smaller. So you kind of have to make the whole thing come in all together. So this is basically just foundational stitching. So I don't worry too much about it. Up here, where I have these curved lines, all of this is more, this will all be seen. Okay, so that's it for my first sit and sew. I wanna thank you if you've made it all the way to the end. And I'm gonna be doing a sit and sew once a week. And also I'll be once a week editing together videos that show really more my process of how I work on all the different elements, including showing quilts from start to finish, um, the dyeing process, the basting process, the applique and finally the quilting and doing the binding as well. So uh, stay tuned to this channel.